Hello everyone, this is Adam Anderson, Product Trainer at Maple Systems. Welcome back to our EB Pro training series. In the last video, we showed you how to add bit lamps, toggle switches, and set bit objects to your project in EB Pro. In this video, we'll add a level tag, as in a tank level, and simulate some data to write to this tag. Then we'll add a bar graph to show the level visually on the screen. Firstly, we copied the previous window over, window 14 to window 15, and we changed the text and the title of the window, and we added a function key on the home screen to take us to this new window. As we continue to introduce new features, we'll separate these out onto different windows like this. If you're following along at home or at work, you can get a free copy of the sample project we're creating here from our website, maplesystems.com. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notified anytime we release new videos. Our first step will be to set up a level tag so we can show a value between 0 and 100 on the screen. But before we do that, we may want to review what registers we're already using in the project. We certainly don't want to use the same register for two different purposes. To avoid that and ensure consistent behavior while we're using local registers on the HMI, we can check in a few places. From previous videos, we know that we can add user-defined tags from the address library on the project tab. So if we click on the address library and look at user-defined tags, when we scroll down we can see that we've set up a number of word or register-based tags from local word 0 to local word 2 and a single bit tag at local bit 0. But if you want a faster visual summary of this information, you can instead go to the address sidebar clicking down here and you can look at the word memory and the bit memory. So looking here we see that local word 0 through 2 are in use that's denoted by the red squares and local word 3 is not in use. So this is our next available register which we'll use for our new tag we're going to create. So far we see with the bit memory that we're just using local bit 0 here too by the way. So let's go back to our address library. We'll create a new word tag, 16-bit unsigned, at local word 3. And we're going to call this my level. So we'll click OK and exit. And then we'll add a new numeric display to the screen from the object tab. Select my level. And add that there. Now the next step, in order to generate some simulated data, we're going to be using a set word object. So if you click on set word, you can pull this up. And the right address, we're going to select that new tag we created. Click OK. And the style we'll be using is periodic bounce. So the value will move up and down and up again between the low and high limits using an increment value and a time interval. If some of these terms are new to you or you're not sure what each of these functions does, at any point you can press F1 on your keyboard and pull up a help menu in EB Pro. So if we click on the set style drop down menu here from the help window, we will pull up a full description of all of these features. So we can see that, for example, periodic bounce uses an upper and lower limit, an increment value, and a time interval. We'll start from the low, go up to the high, and come back down. So that's good for now, and we'll use low of 0, high limit of 100, increment value of 1, and the time interval will set to 0 0.1 seconds. Now we'll click OK, and we can place this on the window. That will be running as soon as we navigate to this window, which we'll show you in simulation mode in just a moment. So from Project tab, click Offline Simulation. click on our function key and we see that value now starting to move up towards our high limit and I'll come back on down to zero if we go back to our home screen now it was around 60 when we left that window let's go back one more time it's still at 60 so what's happening is we place the set word object on the window in question so that will only run when we navigate to this window. 
If instead we want it to run all the time in the background, we can place it on the common window. The common window is built in, and there are some alerts that are built in in EB Pro. For example, if a backup process is going on, it will alert you here. So anything we add to this window will run at all times as soon as the HMI boots up. So if we remove this from our window number 15 here, and we paste this onto the common window, then it will run at all times. Now let's test offline simulation again and see how it changes things. So we go back to the tank level window now. It's moving up and around 50 we'll go back to the home window and go back to that new window again. Now it's around 90 and it's dropping back down and it should continue to do that no matter what window we visit as you see there. Okay. Now for the purposes of this sample project we are going to keep this on this window so that we know where to find it later on. So we'll keep that there. And our next step is going to be to set up a bar chart. So we can do this from the object tab, select chart and bar graph. And here we'll choose a read address, which will be our my level tag that we created. Okay. Next, go to the outline tab. We're using a bar chart here. We don't need to change any of these settings, but in the range tab, we do want to change a couple things. So we know the max value is 100, so we'll set that first. We don't want to use a target indicator now. We'll show you that in a future video. And a low and high limit alarm indicator can be added here. For now, we're just going to set these equal to the min and max values so they won't show up. We'll show you that in a later video too. So we can go ahead and click OK now, and we can place this on our window. And we're going to go ahead and just center these. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and run the simulation and we can see how it looks. All right, so now we have a bar graph showing our level increasing, going up to our limit, and then it will come back down. Now, what if you wanted to add some kind of threshold or target range indicator? We're going to use the alarm and events feature to do that and we'll use our bitlamp to signify when we're at a level around 50. So we'll close the simulation. We don't need this toggle switch anymore because we're going to tie in this bitlamp that we created earlier with a event and alarm. So from the data history tab, click on event alarm log and we're going to click new. Category we can leave as zero priority low and we're going to choose our read address now. The read address is going to be the my level tag. So we're watching the value there but we want to use the notification feature to turn on a bit. The bit that we want to turn on is the my bool tag that we created earlier. So we will turn on this bit under the following condition. We'll turn it off again once that condition is no longer true. What we'll do, we want to enable the bit if the value is equal to 50. And we have an intolerance and out of tolerance level. So below this, if it goes back down, it will still be on. If it goes above, up to that point, 50.2, it would still be on. We're going to change these to 10 and 10. So anytime the value of my level is between 40 and 60, that bit will go on and will be notified on this window that we're using. Let's go ahead and run the offline simulation again and we'll see how it works. Go to our window. We'll watch around 40. This should turn on. Okay. And at 60 it turns back off. Very good. So now we've seen how to set up a new tag, how to check which registers we're already using in the HMI. We've set up a set word object to generate some simulated data. 
a bar graph to show this level visually on the screen. And then we use the alarm feature to turn on a bit using the spit lamp whenever the value is within a given range. We'll look at more advanced features for showing a target range, low and high alarm bands, and more in future videos. Please stay tuned for the next episode where we'll discuss connecting with a PLC or controller.